Hey everybody, uh, stream has started, so I see a few of you have joined. What's up? Hank's in here now. Um, so today is the DIY Bender Assembly, uh, so we're going to get to that here shortly, I guess. Okay, good, we do have audio. I don't know why the music in the beginning wasn't playing, but like I've been telling you guys all week, we're still working on getting all the kinks out. Let me know if you guys have feedback once again. Love to hear it, and I only want to improve, so... Anything that you guys have to share would be awesome. So with the bender, I guess if you guys want to dive right into it, I can. I actually got another camera angle up. So let's see, we've got this one that I can show you of just the top down assembly. But I've also got another angle here. I don't know if this will be any better at all. I'm just trying new things. So let me know what you guys think if, if you want me to change the camera. Just like yell at me in the comments or something and I'll try to do that for you. But maybe we'll start with the top down because it'll kind of give you a little closer view of what's going on here. And I'll actually adjust my mic this week so you guys can hear me better maybe. Let me know if you can't. What event are you at? Carlos, I'm not at an event. I'm doing the stream. So <laughs> let's get going with the assembly. As you can see here, I kind of just have a bunch of random stuff. You might think it's random. I mostly disassembled this. I guess I left it a little bit intact just because it gets a little tedious messing with the nichrome wire. But I guess just for starters, we can go over, like, this is the aluminum U channel that I used. Uh, I cut this to be 30 inches, and I drilled two holes in it, uh, roughly, like, three inches in. So for that, that's pretty easy to figure out the U-channel I just got at Menards. But for the baseboard here, it's all kind of full of holes, as you see. They all have a purpose, don't worry. And it looks kind of like crap, just because this is finished MDF, and it's not really meant for this. But this is the baseboard that I use to hook everything up. I was trying originally to use the U-channel for the entire thing and not even have a baseboard. However, with the way electricity works, you cannot use the U-channel because it just grounds everything. You need a piece of wood. So that's kind of where I got stuck at with using this board, which is kind of ugly, but I just haven't really been able to think of a workaround yet anyways. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. So first off, like I said, I cut this U-channel down to 30 inches. It, comes, it came in a four-foot length, at least mine did. So I cut that, and then I also drilled some holes in it so I could mount it on the board here and then I just got two wood screws and like honestly with the assembly I can pretty much just use a hand screw. I used a screwdriver or a screw gun for most of it and of course you need an electric drill to drill out some holes but overall the assembly is pretty straightforward as you guys will see. So the U-channel is just kind of to protect your two boards that are used for bending you don't want it, it is just wood so I mean and this wire gets pretty hot so you don't want to have your wood start to burn or anything like that it just works for a really good guide anyways so we got the u-channel on and now if you guys notice I didn't totally remove these but these are just threaded wood inserts you can see one right here um, let's see if you can see very well, but this is literally just a, a screw and insert. You use an Allen wrench to screw it in. So you drill out a hole and then you'll insert this in and then you have a threaded hole in your wood. So that works really well for the few bolts that you need to put in. I have three in total. So two right next to each end to hold the wire up over and in the channel. And then one final one over here, which is meant to hold the spring. So I guess I can put this one in right now actually it's this one because I use a nut to adjust the height that'll the nut will help you tighten it down or it'll get tight as you can see right there I've already had it at the right height but the nut allows it to actually tighten up and then it'll stay at that height so that screw is just meant to to let the wire sit in it so you do need a regular Phillips or at least a combo head like that for that screw at least or bolt the other one is just uh, bolt it all the way down and then I have I guess I'll explain further the circuit in a minute But at this end we're just going to screw this one in because as the spring and the spring as I think I've told you guys before is only meant to Keep tension on the wire because the wire actually does stretch when it heats up so if you don't have this spring your wire is going to sag and Then it's going to short out and you won't have a bender so that's pretty simple. Like I said, you're just going to drill out the holes for those wood, wood, wood inserts. Jeez. 
and then you can put in your 1024 bolts is what I use. These are just 1024 half inch bolts. They came in a pack. I got it right here. It was like three bucks for a whole pack of them. So pretty easy stuff. All of this is pretty cheap. I'll go over the cost of everything once we get it all done here. But as I was trying to say for the other end, let's see if we can get it on the camera. For the other end here, as you can see, it's uh, just the same kind of bolt and nut, but I have the wire, the nichrome wire wrapped around the end of the bolt here, and then I also have one of these little, I guess I wouldn't, there's the, the crimp on wire end here, which the bolt goes right over. So this is to complete the circuit, because of course you need a complete circuit for this to even work. So this is just uh, getting the electricity from this end of the wire all the way back down to where the power supply can reach it instead of clamping both ends of the wires and these little clip crimp on uh, ends can work really nicely for that. So once you get that, the wire wrapped on there and then the, the wire end on, you can just screw that one down and you pretty much have your wire in place here which is essentially the entire bender. Next is the, the easy stuff, I guess, because it's just, you know, screwing together wood panels with these hinges. So, I guess to get started, we'll use the one bottom board here that I have. This actually gets screwed down to the baseboard because this does not move. So, first off, let's see if I can line up the holes properly again. And this, I just used some nice little half-inch wood screws. So... That's nothing special, and I just drilled out the holes and then countersunk them a bit with a bigger bit because I actually don't have a countersinking bit with me right here, so it is what it is. <laughs> this is just a prototype, as I've kind of been mentioning, so by no means is this supposed to be like the finished product because we are planning to make this like a finished product for sale on the PPC's website. Let's see, I don't think you can see this end. Maybe. So. This isn't at all finished, but we do plan on making this a more finished product. I'm going to work on it this weekend. I'm going to just get some bare MDF, I think. That'll look better than this. Uh, this is actually just shelving MDF. It's really cheap, and it was fit in my car easily, so I used it. <laughs> and I'll use just bare MDF, and it should look a little bit cleaner, and it won't be quite so rough on the edges if I do it properly, I guess. So, once we get the baseboard screwed down, we're pretty much halfway there, I guess. And I lost the screw. See, Hank, I can fuck up on live stream. Um, so. We've got that in. And now we'll do the top board, which is what hinges. So that's what the hinges are going to be used for. I do believe that I should have uh, actually put the hinges all the way over to the side and actually drilled these holes and put them closer into the center so I could put the hinges all the way out to the edge because the hinges force this little uh, baseboard or your guide here uh, to be a little further out, thus reducing the total bending length. But just a minor tweak that I can do in the final version. I guess. So, I'm covering up all my materials here, but we'll get the hinges out. And all the wood screws. So these are just four inch strap hinges that I once again just picked up at Menards. Pretty cheap stuff, I think like two bucks or so for a pack. And they work perfectly fine for this. The only thing that you want to watch out for when you're actually putting the hinges and drilling the holes mainly for the hinges is that you want to make sure that the actual barrel of the hinge is in line with your wire because that's this is all where the angle is going to happen so if you don't have it square or your hinges aren't square your bender is not going to bend things very square so keep that in mind and just take your time all in all um, this probably just took me a few hours to kind of figure out. The only time consuming part was, you know, getting the wood and cutting it, I guess. So if you have any kind of a wood shop, that should be pretty simple for you guys to do as well. So, yeah, it's a small car. 
A volt? I do not have a volt. I just don't think I can fit a 4x8 sheet of MDF in a two-door car, Carlos. That's all. Thanks for all the help in the comments there, Cody. World Championships of Modding? I wish. This is DIY home stuff. This is just like the beginning of modding. So we got one hinge down on the base at least here. Takes a little bit of time, I guess. Uh, maybe I should have got the electric screw gun, but nonetheless, we'll get it done. So as I said, just be careful when you're installing the hinges. Make sure they line up. I've already got all the holes drilled and it's pretty close to square as far as I could tell. I bent some plastic with this earlier and it works just fine, so I don't know. It seems to be a pretty well working and functioning prototype. And like I said earlier, we'll go over all the materials, so if any of you guys do actually want to just make one of these yourself, it's pretty simple and you guys can use that parts list to go to Menards or Home Depot or whatever and uh, get all this stuff yourself. In total, I think I got what I priced everything out to be like individually, like I actually priced out each screw as well as I could. It was about like $15 or so in materials. So it's pretty cheap aside from the power supply, but I've mentioned that before that the power supply is the more expensive part of this just because there's no way around to getting the power to it without using a variable power supply like this. Well, so guys, it helps if you have the board the right side up. <laughs> now it makes sense. Okay. Get it lined up. See, all in all, though, $15 in materials is pretty much dirt cheap. And I'm betting some of you even have a lot of this stuff laying around your house. Maybe not like nichrome wire, but I mean, this is just regular copper wire. And then we just got wood screws and a few bolts. So a few, aside from a few minor things, you guys should really not have too much of a hard time making one of these yourselves. But we hope that within a week or so, we can actually have like some kind of vendors down at PPCs. I'll be sending those out to Hank hopefully sometime next week. So you guys can see those on our site once we get them up there. I'll definitely let you guys know in the group and other places like Discord and whatnot. So you guys, if you do just want to buy one, we are hoping to have them priced like close to like 90 to 100 because they will include the power supply. And the power supply itself costs like close to 40 bucks. So that's where most of the expense comes from. But I would have to believe that $100 is decently affordable for a tool like this, I guess. I mean, this tool isn't exactly like a tool that you're going to use every single day, but as for bending plastic, I think I've told you guys before, I really wouldn't want to do it any other way. There, There's a heat gun method, but this honestly kind of eliminates a lot of the guesswork when it comes to bending plastic. So we're missing two screws still. <laughs> But we've almost got it put together here and what it's only been like 10 minutes so there's really nothing to it and if anything i think one way we can probably try to reduce cost for these things is maybe even ship them disassembled and have you got mostly disassembled at least i was even playing around with the idea of just selling all the hardware and then people going out and just getting the mdf themselves and cutting it Although that does once again limit the people we'd sell to, because not everyone has a saw that they can cut things like MDF with. But it's just an idea because the bulk of this, you know, shipping this is just this this wood. So, and for some reason it doesn't want to hinge anymore. Well, it was working earlier. <laughs> I wonder if it's just getting a little too tight. That is so weird. I don't really want to force it, but it's not going to work if it doesn't hinge. And now you guys won't believe me that I have a working prototype. So I guess I don't exactly know what's going on here. But 
we'll get it sorted out. Oh no. Yeah, oh no. I have no idea why it won't actually want to hinge right now. It's not like I've changed anything since I took it apart. Like, it's just like, seems like it wants to sit too close to the U channel now, but that doesn't really make any sense. Because, like I said, I didn't change anything. No holes were re drilled. To me, if I just loosen this up a little bit. You don't need all the screws anyways, do you? There it wants to work, but I don't know why it wants to bind up otherwise. Hmm. Maybe if I hold it up when I screw it together. Bear with me, guys. This is just a prototype, so there was expected or we were at least expecting to have some things that had to be tweaked or changed and just wouldn't overall work but at the end of the day progress has been made one hinge upside down no there's not a hinge upside down they're both right side up oh I suppose you can't see the other end I gotta work on the camera angle, guys. I'm sorry. So, let's see. Once the hinge there, let's see if I can put in the final two screws. So I think I dropped one, so we'll just go with one more. But, um, it works nonetheless, I think. It's good enough for government work. <laughs> okay, it hinges now. It's magic. So, that's cool. Um, this final wood screw here is just for this little guide. So that actually goes all the way down through three boards and still holds everything together. The guide is definitely useful though, because without it, you won't be getting perfect bends or, I mean, you can, but you're going to have to eyeball everything then. Because we are actually also going to work on getting some sort of guide that will just like mount to this. So it'll just be like another block of wood that will, or you could use your mic apparently. Uh, so it'll be another block of wood that will just stop the bender from... Maybe if I go like this. Is this a better camera angle for you guys? So it would stop the bender, you know, I guess you can't see this side of it from that camera angle. But a guy just to help you get like a perfect 90 or we were even thinking about maybe doing a 45 as well. So I'll work on that because that just takes a little more development, I guess, to figure out how to do that cleanly and easily. But it shouldn't be a big deal, because I think people would like a way to do an exact bend. Although I've always just kind of eyeballed it myself, and it seems to work all right. <laughs> so now that I've got it all put together here, um, as I mentioned, we got this wire going all the other side. So, oh, you can actually see over here now a little bit, if the power supply wasn't in the way. But I'm just hooking up the alligator clips that are on the power supply. Um, one directly to the wire, maybe if you want to try this. Yeah, so you see one here directly to the wire, and then now I got a mess to clean up. And the other one is just connected to, once again, just another crimp on um, wire end there. So I just got it hooked up directly to that, and it should work. So... I guess make sure your wire is kind of like the right height and as I said before lined up and straight and I guess give her give her a shot here and it actually still seems to work so that's amazing so I guess to prove that it works I will bend a piece of plastic for you guys and I'll switch the camera angle too so maybe maybe this camera angle will work better so I just got a piece of uh, plexi here or acrylic one of the two It'll bend nonetheless. And we'll just put a nice 90 in that. I was going to try to do something with the case here, but I figure next week when we kind of get further into the case mods, I'll just actually do a legitimate power supply, and I can even use this bender if you guys like. I still have mine, too. Um, all pretty much the same stuff. So today we'll just kind of do a bend here quick. 
But next week, you guys can let me know how we want to do a power supply shroud. I was thinking of doing one of those little mini monitors that I've done in plenty of other builds of mine. So we can look at doing that as well, which kind of adds a complicated part to making the PSU shroud and bending it, but I can go over that later. So I think it should be. It's getting pretty close. You can usually see right around the edges of the plexi there. Uh, it'll actually start to like sag almost a little bit. And that's when you know that the plastic is getting pretty close to being hot enough to bend. And once it is, you usually want to shut off the power supply before you actually start bending, because otherwise your bend is never going to cool down. And you'll be here all day. And I know not all of you have all day. <laughs> So here we go, first bend, at least that you guys have seen with it. Um, I hope you can, you can kind of see, you can see the back. But as you can tell, I'm just holding at 90 and hoping for the best. We'll try to get some kind of a guide for you guys and actually the finished product. That way it eliminates even more guesswork. Because this tool is just supposed to make bending, you know, pretty fast and easy. And as far as I can tell, it mostly completes that job. But there you have it. It's just a little bit of cooling, and you kind of get the idea. So it isn't actually a perfect 90. No, I'm wrong camera. It isn't actually a perfect 90, but it's close. Um, if I actually took the time, you can just make a perfect 90. You can also use, if you just have uh, my square isn't in here. If you just have a square, like a metal uh, uh, wood square, you can use that as a guide as well. So, I don't know. How do you guys like it? Did it, did it actually impress you enough to consider either making one or buying one yourselves? I can do make it. I suppose we can switch back to this. You guys have seen it all now. Um, I guess I just want to talk a little bit more about what else you guys want to see we do with this bender as well as just the stream in general. I know this is like uh, the fourth or fifth one. I plan on next week we'll start doing a... Let me get the mic back. We'll start doing a Tuesday, Thursday, maybe would be like the regular time to stream, and at noon still. So if that works for you guys, uh, I would definitely love to have you guys stop by for the future streams as well. Um, as I mentioned, next week we should start on the Define S mods. If you guys didn't see that I posted, uh, there's pictures on the page and in Discord and on Instagram of the front panel that Jeremy has laser cut for us that I should be putting on next week. I got the front panel all ready to cut up, so we can do that on stream as well. And all the other mods we've talked about. Uh, the dies should be here today. I haven't checked the mail yet, but I will shortly. And hopefully we can get you guys some die footage. Um, just think of colors that you guys would want me to try out that you wouldn't want to actually try yourself or you know, spend all the money on different dies to see if you get the right combo. Kind of the goal of that stream, so I'm excited to do that. Uh, I don't know if Jason's in here, but hopefully he can help me out with that. I don't have all the experience in the world with dyes, but it should be a fun one to do anyways. Pink. Carlos wants pink. On a serious note, would this work for PTG2? Actually, that's actually a really good question, Charles, because I've actually always wondered that myself. So, I can go grab a piece of PTG if you guys want me to just try it real quick. Um, it'll take me two short seconds. So I'll grab a piece of PTG tubing for you out of the shop, and we can see if it... I, I don't know how it'll do... I think it might be a little weird and it might just warp it, but I'll grab that. So, we got tube, and I can switch the camera. Um, maybe if I do move this over enough or turn the camera. You guys will be able to see if it actually works. That banner looks good back Oh, dude, the banner is not so good back there, actually. It's like barely staying up. I gotta work on actually getting it hung up properly. So, it's a work in progress, all this is. But yeah, Hank got the whole uh, divider privacy screen, so that seems to clean things up a little bit, at least. So we got PTG tube here. I really, I think I'm tempted to just sit here and like roll it since that's kind of, and I, I suppose I should actually have an insert too. That's dumb. Um, I'll go grab an insert. 
before this gets too far because it definitely won't work without an insert. So, we got an insert, and this is a crap tube that's been cut bad, but it should do nonetheless. I need my reamer. <laughs> oh, well. So, I'm just going to sit here and just, like, spin this thing, and let's see if this will actually bend your acrylic tube, because that would be another purpose for this, I guess. Those are helpful. Yeah, roll it. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens, guys. It shouldn't take too long. The wire is pretty dang hot. I have no idea what the actual temperature is, but... I guess we'll see how this works out. Oh, yeah, she's not even budging yet. I think a heat gun is more effective. <laughs> but I guess having the ability to get it as a lever so you can do a more steady bend would maybe be worthwhile. I don't know. If you guys actually make one or buy one, you can play with this too and see if it actually helps you bend tube or not. I think I'm fine with sticking with the heat gun, <laughs> as far as I can tell. But thank you, Cody, for at least the idea. Ooh, man, it is not. I should have thinner tube. If I had thinner tube, maybe this would actually go well. But the four millimeter thick wall of the tubing is proving like it's going to take a while to heat up. Carlos says I can do it. You just got to believe. <laughs> In the meantime, I guess I'm going to plug our Discord as well. You guys can see the link um, down. Oh, I don't know what camera I'm on anymore. But at the bottom of the screen there, you can see a link to our Discord and all our other social media. But definitely, guys, stop in there and hang out. We kind of just talk about all kinds of ideas, like the Bender, as well as the different mods for the Fine S, and, of course, everyone else's builds and projects that they're working on. So just a great place to kind of hang out and chat, as well as the group, you know, just kind of have another outlet to hang out with PC people, water coolers and modders. All of them are around, so we'd love to have new people join. Dude, I don't know. This is not even, like... <laughs> It's not even getting flexible, so <laughs> I don't think this will actually work at all. Maybe if we had uh, the 18 gauge wire with a 10 amp PSU, it would get hot enough. Or as I said before, thinner tube. But I think in general, like this is just not gonna have enough heat to even do PTG. I think acrylic would probably be a joke. Um, sorry guys, I guess. I'll keep it on here for another minute, but I really don't think it's gonna get there anytime soon so just an, another idea to play with i guess other than that though guys um if you want to see more on the bender definitely follow like i said all the different social media that we have uh link down below i'll keep posting updates in all those places as much as i can and definitely tune in for the next stream that we have going uh i plan that on tuesday so i think Depending on what's going on with the bender and whatnot, we'll either do the Define S mods or the dies. Um, I'll talk more with Hank on that, I guess, and see what he says we should do. It's kind of all on him, but if you guys enjoyed this stream today, definitely hit that like button on there, wherever it is. I don't know how these Facebook streams work even, so <laughs> it's all just a work in progress. I appreciate all you guys' feedback. Um, yeah, the, the, the tube ain't going to bend, guys. I'm sorry. I'm going to call it quits, turning it off. So on that note, I guess I'll kind of head out for the stream, but I hope to catch you guys next week, Tuesday at noon, and hopefully Thursday as well, again at noon. Thanks for stopping in, everybody, and I hope you enjoy your day, and I'll see you soon.